Great to see you, Dr. Darrell. Thanks for your time. Well, let's pick up right there. You had a role in the state's announcement today as an unpaid advisor to both Governor Baker and the Education Commissioner. So I assume the answer to this question is yes, but does the data support making this decision now? Well, we're in a very different place today than we were even at the beginning of the school year, and we need to message that and act accordingly. We have vaccines, we have a ton of immunity from infection, we have therapeutics now, cases are plummeting. It's time to talk about treating this virus like we do every other. We can't keep restrictions in place indefinitely. And while we may not all agree on the right timing or thresholds, I think we can all agree that our children deserve normalcy and they need to catch up on their learning. Everyone, to school and emotional growth. Everyone can agree with that, but is it too early? I think that with the cases plummeting the way they are, we are ready to take that step at the end of the month. All right, let's look at the February calendar. Already kids are in school through next Friday. And then the following week, here comes winter break. Monday, February 28th is their first day back, as well as the date that the mandate ends. So in communities that do allow those kids to return to classrooms without wearing masks, should we expect to see a surge in COVID-19 cases? No, I don't necessarily expect that. Some school districts are already talking about waiting a week or two after vacation for that reason. And they're certainly permitted to do that if they wish. But this change to the mask mandate is part of a more general shift away from a focus on counting cases to a more broad focus on preventing serious disease. And key to that is continuing to do mm -hmm. everything possible between now and then and beyond to get the entire school community mm -hmm. vaccinated. We, we know that the the risk of serious symptoms or even death is much lower for children under the age of 18, but a small percentage of kids and staff in every school is more vulnerable. They may have asthma, they may have diabetes, some have cancer. What do you want those families and those teachers to know tonight? First, everyone should be vaccinated. That's your best protection against severe disease. High risk people should definitely be boosted. Immunocompromised people are eligible for fourth doses. That's key. Second, we now have really effective outpatient therapies, both oral and injectable, in a sufficient supply for high-risk people who become infected. Most are approved for age 12 and up. And lastly, one-way masking works. So that old phrase, my mask protects you and your mask protects me, it came about when the CDC was advising us to make our cloth masks at home. Now everyone can wear a medical grade mask that will protect them against infection, but schools should make those available for those who can't afford them. Dr. Shira Jerome, thank you so much as always for your expertise. We appreciate it.